MG continues to specialise in providing budget brand buyers access to full electrification at super affordable prices. In 2020, the company announced its second zero emissions model, the MG5 EV Estate, then improved it a year later with a larger 61 kilowatt hour battery to create the MG5 EV long range model that we're going to look at here. This, the UK's first and cheapest EV estate, offers a 250 mile combined driving range, an increase of 36 miles over the original 52 kilowatt hour version, all for a reasonably conventional price. Exciting? Possibly not. Clever? Definitely. Even with the aid of the government's plug-in grant, a budget at or around £30,000 doesn't get you much these days if you want your next car to be a full EV. Certainly not much that's family-sized. Unless you opt for one of these, the MG5 EV, a rather different kind of estate and one that's a lot easier to justify now that MG has relaunched it in the long-range 61.1 kilowatt hour battery form we're going to look at here. You might not have yet registered the existence of the MG5, basically a Europeanised version of a model from MG's Chinese parent group, SAIC, the Ro EI5. The brand first launched it in 2020 with a 52.2 kilowatt hour battery that offered a modest 214 mile driving range. Customer interest was also, well, modest. But this car's now worth a second look, not only because of its longer 250 mile potential between charges, but also because it gains MG's pilot driver assist system that offers extra camera safety tech. Most of the other EVs at this price point are smaller and can't go as far between charges. In fact, at the time of this test in early 2022, there was only one other EV estate car on the market, the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. In short, the MG5 offers something a bit different, but would you want one? That's what we're going to find out. It's a sign of the times that you can't have any sort of combustion engine in an MG5, not even a plug-in hybrid one. And it's a reflection of the needs of the European market that the single EV model we do get is quite a lot more powerful than the version offered to the Chinese. The output of this long-range 61 kilowatt hour model, unchanged over the original 52 kilowatt hour version, is set at 156 PS. That's 42 PS more than the Far Eastern Ro EI5 version of this design, reflecting the fact that family folk here have been conditioned to expect their EVs to be quite quick. So this one gets to 60 miles an hour in just 7.3 seconds, on the way to a rather un-EV-like top speed of 115 miles an hour. Those family folk will be expecting a reasonably long driving range too. They didn't really get it with the 214 mile figure offered by the original model, but this long range version's 250 mile combined figure is a bit more like it. To get close to that, you'll need to have selected the most frugal of the three available drive modes, Eco, and made proactive use of the three Kerr's regenerative braking settings, the most powerful of which slows the car noticeably off throttle. You won't be expecting much from the drive dynamics, and you shouldn't, but the steering is reasonably well weighted and the ride soaks up sharper bumps and speed humps quite well. You'll need to be careful with your right foot, it's easy for the power on offer through the single speed auto gearbox to quickly overwhelm the front tyres, modest reserves of traction. Pushing on a bit offers the opportunity to switch out of the default normal drive setting into sport and as with most EVs, body roll is controlled by the low placement of the battery in the chassis floor. Longer trips in particular are aided by the inclusion of MG Pilot, a package of active safety features including adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist and automatic emergency braking. MG already sells the market's most affordable family-sized EV crossover, the ZS EV. But while that model won't be quite big enough for some families, this contender, the market's most affordable EV estate, just might be. 
The exterior styling, unchanged with this long-range model, is restrained and conservative and not particularly suggestive of a budget brand. In profile, a crisp shoulder line runs above the door handles with lower creases that give the flank some shape. These 16-inch Meteor alloy wheels are standard and silver roof rails decorate this plusher exclusive version. Whichever variant you opt for, you certainly get a lot of metal for the money. The MG5 is 4.54 metres long, which to give you some perspective is about 100 millimetres shorter than a Ford Focus Estate, though this MG's 2.6 metre wheelbase is only 43 millimetres shorter than that Ford's. This Chinese contender is 1.82 metres wide and 1.54 metres tall too. Up front, bi-function projection headlights with LED daytime running lights flank a central grille with six silver bars and a central brand badge, behind which the charging point resides. At the rear, a silver strip links the tail lights. There's a subtle roof spoiler and chrome finishing decorates the lower reflectors. Let's take a look inside. Up front, the specialist motoring press has been a bit disparaging about the cabin ambience, but it's actually not that far off volume brand standards without feeling especially plush, even in this top exclusive spec variant with its white stitched leatherette upholstery. Still, MG's getting there and clear efforts have been made with cabin quality. The piano black trimmed lower console, the silver inlay panel around the center fascia vents and the bright work adorning the steering wheel, the cup holders and the climate controls. MG's tried to meet the current prevailing class standard for infotainment too with this eight inch center monitor. It'll usually display in this split screen format with audio navigation and Apple CarPlay options easily accessible. And this silver center control acts as an activation and back button. A small car option at the base of the display connects you through to screens with driving assistance, comfort and battery heating options. Anything else you might need to know can be found in the instrument binnacle, which combines a central seven inch screen with rather curiously on an electric vehicle, outer analog dials, the left one for speed and the right being an EV power meter. When the ignition is fired, the outer edges of both analog dials are completed by the edges of the center screen with a green battery percentage graphic on the left and a blue voltage display on the right. The central part of the screen can show a drive assistance graphic or settings options, but will usually be kept in its car mode via which you can view electrical information, tire pressures, a digital speedo or trip computer data. What else? Well, you sit quite high, almost like an SUV, and there's plenty of interior storage space, a big glove box, large door bins, and a lidded compartment between the seats. Twin cup holders reside below the gear selector dial with a little cubby next to the electronic handbrake. Plus, there are narrow compartments on both sides of the central footwell tunnel. A slide back lid under the center stack reveals twin USB-A ports and a 12 volt socket. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now on the back seat, there's ample headroom and legroom, even for taller occupants. And you could fit three adults in without much trouble, thanks to the relative absence of a central transmission tunnel. Twin USB ports are provided along with seat back pockets, big door bins, coat hooks in the upper grab handles, twin cup holders in the center armrest, and the usual ISOFIX child seat fastenings. Finally, this is an estate car, so you'll want to know about boot space, which is rated at 578 litres with the rear seats in place, around the same as a Ford Focus estate. For reference, that's about 200 litres more room than you get from an EV hatch like the Volkswagen ID3. There's space beneath the floor for a spare wheel, but MG doesn't provide one. Still, this is a usable space, an adjustable height boot floors included. There are netted areas left and right, plus you get a warning triangle and a light on the left. Unfortunately, though, there's no ski hatch for longer items or 40-20-40 seat back split. 
Fold the 60-40 split rear bench flat in this MG5 and you can extend your storage space to 1,456 litres. There are two MG5 EV long-range trim levels, Base, Excite and Exclusive. At the time of this test, in early 2022, the asking prices for this estate after deduction of the government's £1,500 plug-in car grant started at around £28,000 for the Excite variant or around £30,500 for this top exclusive version. On the other side of your MG dealer's showroom, the same sort of money would get you the slightly smaller MG ZS EV. That's a full electric crossover. Or, if you wanted the combination of EV and engine, a slightly larger SUV, the MG HS plug-in hybrid. If you want this much metal from other brands in the EV segment, you'll need to pay more. Or if you want to keep your budget at or around £30,000, you'll need to accept a smaller car. A little smaller in the case of a Nissan Leaf, or a lot smaller in the case of, say, a Renault Zoe. This is also the kind of money being asked for much smaller super mini-sized EVs like the Honda e, the Mazda MX-30, the Peugeot E208 and the Vauxhall Corsa e. All of which means that on paper this MG5 could look attractive to a family customer, especially when they take a look at the standard spec. Basic sight trim gets you 16-inch Meteor alloy wheels, air conditioning, a rear parking camera and a 7-inch driver information display screen. Plus, cruise control, a leather steering wheel, an automatically dimming rear view mirror, three driving modes, three cares, brake regeneration settings, rear parking sensors and follow me home headlights, as well as a seven-year warranty. Infotainment's taken care of by an 8-inch colour touchscreen incorporating navigation, a 6-speaker 3D audio system and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring. If you want more, this exclusive version adds leather-style upholstery with heated front seats featuring six-way electric adjustment for the driver. And at this level, you also get silver roof rails, also air conditioning, power folding heated mirrors, smart keyless entry with push-button start, rain-sensing wipers and one-shot electric rear windows. Safety provision has taken a big step forward with the introduction of this long-range model thanks to the standard inclusion of the MG Pilot camera safety package. This includes active emergency braking, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic jam assist, intelligent high beam assist and intelligent speed limit assist. Passive systems include front, side and curtain airbags, electronic brake assist, ABS with EBD, twin isofix points in the rear, a tyre pressure monitoring system, hill start assist and seatbelt warnings for front and rear passengers. Earlier we mentioned this car's 250 mile WLTP rated driving range, 23 miles less than a ZS EV. That's a combined figure. MG quotes 190 miles for motorways, 279 for rural roads, 334 for towns and cities and 344 miles for slow moving traffic. Some class perspective? Well, you'd have to pay over £30,000 for the bigger 62 kilowatt hour battery E Plus version of Nissan's Leaf to get close to that, and even then you'd only get 239 miles. A mid range 58 kilowatt hour Volkswagen ID3 manages up to 260 miles, but that's a smaller car and would cost much more when equipped to this MG standard. All the other contenders you could name are either super minis or small EVs. And none can match this MG5's range figure, and some are well below. You could easily, for instance, pay MG5 money for a Honda e or a Mazda MX-30 and get half as much driving range. As we said in our driving section, you'll need to activate the Kerr's toggle switch, which alters the level of regenerative braking and therefore energy harvesting, 
and engage the provided eco mode to get anywhere near these figures in normal driving. We'd say 200 to 220 miles between charges would be more achievable. Charging an MG5 EV is straightforward thanks to its combined CCS and Type 2 port mounted within the front grille for easy access from either side of the car, but access via a rather flimsy flap. The CCS plug-in is an enhanced version of the Type 2 plug with two additional power contacts for the purposes of quick charging and supports AC and DC charging power. Featuring rapid charging capability, the car can charge from 10 to 80% in 40 minutes from a 100 watt kilowatt charging station, if of course you can find one. At home, the car can recharge itself using a standard 7.4 kilowatt wall box in around nine and a half hours. That's about an hour quicker than MG ZS EV, which has a larger 72 kilowatt hour battery. Either way, overnight charging should be easy, and in emergencies, the car can also, of course, be charged via a standard three-pin plug, though that'll take a yawning 18 hours. The 61.1 kilowatt hour battery pack is managed by MG's intelligent battery temperature control system and insulated from external temperature variations so that it can deliver the optimum power and range, whatever the weather. As with all MG models, you also get one of the longest fully transferable warranties in its class, a seven year or 80,000 mile package being standard across all variants. Rivals such as Hyundai only provide five years. Users will benefit from 1% benefiting kind tax during the 22-23 tax year, which means low company car tax. Think from £55 for a 20% taxpayer or from £110 for a 40% taxpayer. Insurance is Group 27A, service intervals are every year or 15,000 miles. Here, maybe, just maybe, is the market's most sensible family car. You'd have to be free from the affliction of badge snobbery to consider it and have no particular interest in the joy of driving. But if that doesn't bother you, then an MG5 EV might have plenty to recommend it as an ownership proposition if your next family car simply must be an EV. You'll get a feeling for just how far the MG brand has come if you happen to remember the company's last family-sized model that wasn't a crossover, the unlamented MG6, a car that struggled to find any sort of sales traction at all in the UK market. This MG5 also struggled a bit at its initial introduction back in 2020, but it deserves to find a wider audience in this much-improved long-range form, the version we ought to have had from the start. For the price of a planet-polluting mid-range Focus or Astra Estate, you could have one of these. A car just as practical, but offering zero tailpipe emissions and a model that you could run without ever having to visit a filling station again. Makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs>